Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anselmo de Lea. I am the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission for the Town of Clinton. Uh, I call this meeting special public hearing to order. It's not a special, it's a public hearing to order. There's only one item on the agenda. It's the Planning and Conservation and Development. And we have a vote. Anselmo de Lea. Here. Alan Kravitz. Michael Vincent. Here. Edward Alvarino. Here. Maurice Kirk Carr. Present. Pamela Fritz. Christine Gupil. Here. Timothy Guerra. Here. Mark Arcuano. Here. Gary Biscay. Here. Mary Ellen Dahlgren. Here. Peggy Sullivan. Okay, Mary Ellen Dahlgren for Pamela Fritz. Gary Biscay for Chris Allen. Allen Fritz. Okay. Yep. Okay, Secretary, please read the uh, legal notice. Legal notice published September 28, 2015, 7 p.m. Green Room. The Clinton Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 28, 2015, at 7 p.m. in the Green Room in the Andrews Memorial Town Hall, 54 East Main Street, Clinton, Connecticut, to consider the following. One, Town Plan of Conservation and Development. At said hearing, all persons will have the right to be heard and written communication received. The applications and accompanying maps are available for public inspection at the Land Use Office at the Andrews Memorial Town Hall. Clinton Planning and Zoning Commission and Selma Leah Chairman. Email of Harbor News to appear two times, Thursday, September 17, 2015, and Thursday, September 24, 2015. Okay, some uh, preliminary rules and procedures. We only have one item tonight on the agenda. That's the plan of conservation and development. Uh, it is going to be presented by our consultant planner, John Guskowski, who's sitting at the table here. He's going to have some slides to show us. Um, once that presentation is concluded, I am going to open it up to the members of the public for comments, either for it or against it, or just general comments. Hopefully everyone will have an opportunity to pipe in and tell us what they want. Um, just briefly introductory, I want to say that this is the culmination of a multi-year effort, thousands of hours um, expended by many members. I want to particularly uh, call attention to two individuals who had a whole work uh, in this effort, and that would be Alan Kravitz and Christine Lupino with the assistance of other members of the Planning Committee and the Ad Hoc Committee that was comprised of also Mary Ellen Dahlgren, uh, Peggy Sullivan, Kirk Carr. I don't think I'm missing anybody uh, from that committee. The rest of the commission also uh, chimed in at various points during the process. This was a process that uh, made an effort, a real effort, to engage the public originally, initially, and throughout uh, the, the period of time that we've been uh, working with this. As in everything else, it's probably not a perfect plan, but it is a plan that I think we can be all pretty much satisfied with. You can nitpick one portion or another, but as an overall plan, I think it, it does the job. That's my personal opinion. I, uh, I try to uh, keep us focused over the last two years when the bulk of the effort took place. I want to thank those that were involved. John, your assistance, professional assistance, the land use office, the CEO, Eric Knapp, and Julie Putnam have been invaluable in the process. And now I will uh, put the floor to our planner, consultant planner, to uh, proceed with an explanation of what this is all about. John, you're up. You guys may want to and with apologies to okay, and with apologies to Tim and and uh, Ellen, I'm, I'm going to speak mostly this way. Can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. So um, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and as as Anselmo mentioned, my name is John Guskowski. I'm the town's uh, planning consultant. And um, I'm just this evening going to provide hopefully a very brief overview of what, generally speaking, a plan of conservation and development is, the process um, involved in creating this one, a little bit about its, about its structure and contents, 
um, and um, it's, it's background. Uh, it's a very big and extremely dense document. Um, it's a 150 page document uh, with a lot of um, content. So I'm not going to go over in any kind of detail the, the very specific um, you know, uh, point by point of the, the plan itself. Um, hopefully people have gotten a chance to look at it online or in the land use office or in the clerk's office um, and we're, we're here tonight to sort of take your, your general input and answer some questions. Okay, so first, what is a plan of conservation and development? Um, this is a, on a local level, this is the town's master plan uh, for the next 10 years. It attempts to answer the question, broadly speaking, of what does the town want to look like 10 years from now, and how do we get from where we are today to that vision uh, of 10 years in the future. The plan of conservation and development is considered the town's master plan. Um, however, it is not something that statutorily is adopted by the town as a whole, it's not town meeting, it's not town council, it's not board of selectmen. Uh, the plan of conservation and development is the domain of the planning commission. In Clinton you have a joint planning and zoning commission, but in towns that just have a planning commission and a separate zoning commission, it's the planning commission's responsibility to write it, to adopt it. Um, the planning commission has, as Anselmo said, been extremely active in trying to solicit input um, and get buy-in from various other commissions, um, as well as stakeholder organizations and the citizenry themselves. I think they've done a very good job doing that. Um, a couple of things that the Plan of Conservation and Development does um, is that it should affect uh, zoning and subdivision regulatory changes moving forward from this point for the next 10 years. So any change that's going to be made to the subdivision regulations or the zoning regulations, changing in a map, changing in um, size of lots, allowed uses, um, special permit process or special exception process. All of these things need to be filtered through the plan of conservation and development and the question needs to be asked and answered. Does this proposed change, uh, is this proposed change in harmony with the goals and, and vision of the plan of conservation and development? Um, a caveat to that is if the answer is no, that this regulatory change is not in harmony with the plan of conservation and development, that does not prohibit the, plan of con the, the planning and zoning commission from approving that change that may not be in harmony. Um, but it, it should raise some eyebrows amongst other, you know, amongst the commission itself and certainly amongst the public that the, the commission is or is not following their own vision, their own stated plan. Um, special exception uses, um, there's always a, a question and, and most of the, the larger, certainly the more controversial um, development applications that you'll see before planning and zoning commission over the next 10 years, um, all have to answer that question, is this development uh, in, in harmony and does it advance the goals of the plan of conservation and development? And that's a very large um, question. And if, if it can be clearly demonstrated that the proposed development um, does not advance the goals of the plan of conservation and development, the Planning and Zoning Commission is very much in their rights to deny or strongly condition um, that application. It also establishes priorities for action. Is this clear? Is the, is the focus yep. all right? Okay. Um, Maybe it's just me. Um, it also establishes priorities for action, not only and certainly for the plan of Con for the planning and zoning commission themselves and their staff, their consultants, um, but it also should est establish priorities for action for a number of other boards and commissions and formal bodies of the of the town of Flint. Um, large capital expenditures, questions about uh, land acquisition, land disposition. Um, that would be the domain of the um, the Open Space Commissioner of Conservation, those folks who, who acquire land, Board of Selectmen, the Town Meeting, Board of Finance. All of those um, large decisions or large municipal decisions are also uh, have to be filtered through the Plan of Conservation and Development. And the, the, the question needs to be asked, is this, is this decision in harmony? Um, the state and the region were a member of the Lower Connecticut River Valley Council of Governments, River Cog. Um, which is a 17 town region in basically Middlesex County plus old, old Lyman Lyman. Um, have are, are developing a regional plan. There is currently a state plan, which is a five year plan. Um, it is the aim of this plan, this town of Clinton plan of conservation and development, to be in harmony with those goals. Uh, and again, sort of broadly defined surrounding um, which portions of the town should be preserved, which should be more strongly developed. Are there open spaces that should be acquired? Are there public areas of infrastructure that should be extended? 
those areas should be in harmony with the state plan as well. And uh, lastly, um, the, the plan of conservation and development is extremely important because it affects the way that the town is eligible for and may receive state and federal uh, discretionary funding, grants, um, loans, uh, allocations from the state or the federal government. If the town has an area that is designated in our plan, our local plan, for conservation, hands off, don't develop, and stay away, and then all of a sudden the town is, is looking for a, a sewer line extension or to build a school somewhere in that same area, the state will most likely say, it's in your plan as conservation, we will not give you these funds. On the flip side, if, if an area is um, not listed, well, I guess that's the same side of the, the other side of the same coin. Um, uh, an area needs to be listed as a priority in the plan of conservation and development for eligibility for many state and federal grants. So, in many ways, there is a lot on, in this plan, uh, and appropriately so, that is something of a laundry list of priorities, um, sort of with an eye on future funding opportunities. So, if we want to put as much uh, of our priorities in the plan to help uh, fund them down the road. Uh, a little bit of the history of the plan, and Selma went over some of this. Um, the last comprehensive plan in the town was approved in 2007. That's a shot of it up in the upper right. The rewrite of this plan began actually way back in, in 2010. Uh, the 2007 plan was a little bit vague. It was a little bit um, not specific. It didn't go into a, a great deal of depth. And there was a feeling, I think, particularly amongst the planning committee and the planning and zoning commission at, at, as a whole, that. Um, a, a better plan was needed and, and a long lead time was needed to, to really develop a much more robust plan. Uh, so again, as it's almost said, the planning committee, um, led by, by uh, Alan Kravitz and Christine Goupil, um, really began uh, to, to start this process back in 2010. Uh, the more substantial work began uh, in 2013 uh, and has taken place basically for the last two, two and a half years. Um, mostly through the planning committee, uh, later through the, the POCD um, ad hoc committee, and again, everything filtered through the, the Planning and Zoning Commission. There was a number of public outreach sessions. A large charrette um, took place here in this room last January, a year ago January, um, at which several, I don't know, 40 or 50 members of the public, it was, it was a fairly large crowd, uh, participated in, in sort of a mapping and prioritization exercise. Um, and a number of special sessions were held. A number of them at here, a number of them at the library, uh, to look at special focus areas. What do we want to happen with Route 1? What do we want to see happen with the, um, the, the soon-to-be-abandoned Morgan School property? Um, affordable housing, aging population, all of these, all of these um, focus discussions went into uh, the drafting of the Plan of Conservation and Development. And then there was a number of other special studies um, that, that occurred over the last several years that were sort of tied in on um, the planning components. Um, certainly the West End study that was undertaken by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the WPCC, the Water Pollution Control Commission, um, they had to do a wastewater study uh, for, for the town of Oakland <coughs> and some of the, um, the problematic areas for wastewater. Um, a lot of the recommendations of that study, which is I think probably in its final draft format right now, it's not quite approved, um, but a lot of that work was wrapped into the Planning Conservation and Development. Um, the Cecil Group study, uh, which took a look at the, re the potential redevelopment of the Unilever site and the historic preservation of the neighborhood around the Unilever site um, was incorporated. River Cog is also uh, finalizing a Route 1 corridor study, incorporating the towns of Saybrook, Westbrook, and, and Clinton into sort of a, a harmonious um, improvement uh, recommendation for Route 1. And then the Interchange Development Committee uh, was very active in, in um, shaping what the future of the Morgan School site will be and recruiting uh, developers for that. And all of that work was wrapped into um, the drafting of the plan and the visioning of the plan. Uh, I mentioned the charrette uh, that we had. I don't know how well you can see this, but what we did with the charrette, we received a lot of public input. And we uh, transcribed all that public input and did a basic a word cloud to get a sense of what does the public want, or what is on the public's mind when it comes to looking at Clinton for the next 10 years. And the ones that you can read there are probably not surprising. Those are the ones that, that came up or were, were stated at the charrette most often. Big words like Route 1, Route 81, Downtown, Planning, Development, Unilever, um, Friendly. Uh, these are all 
common concerns. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about character, um, making the community stronger, more opportunities. Um, so all of this, this um, is sort of just a, just a visual representation of some of the things that were on the town's mind as part of the public input process. Wrapping all that together, um, the town, uh, or the, the group that wrote the, the, um, the plan, that primarily wrote the plan, wrote a very long vision statement. Uh, but within that very long vision statement, it's about a page long, uh, and it is in the document, have these four we envision statements that really, and if you'll, if you'll indulge me, I'm going to read, because they really distill down um, what the entire framework of the plan is built around. So the four statements are, we envision a Clinton that focuses mixed use and commercial redevelopment in targeted areas and along the Route 1 corridor, and that serves local and regional needs. We envision a Clinton that ensures thoughtful and appropriate economic development that does not detract from existing businesses, but introduces a healthy and competitive business environment. We envision a Clinton that preserves existing neighborhood character while increasing linkages, walkability, access to amenities, and cultural resources while pursuing the necessary supporting infrastructure. We envision a Clinton that protects its rich environment and the shoreline and plans for future con conservation and adaptation to climate change. So in those four statements, frequently in, the, in each of the statements, you can hear those elements of conservation and development. We want to conserve our natural resources while still encouraging economic development. We want to preserve our neighborhoods while developing tighter linkages and more appropriate um, economic opportunities and growth. Uh, we want to preserve our way of life but also develop the necessary infrastructure to allow us to grow in harmony. Um, so this is, those, those statements really do uh, get at the crux of how the plan was, was shaped and written. Um, it's a lot of that blending of the community character that's very important to Clinton, but recognizing that we need to grow, and Clinton needs to, to grow to survive. Um, and it's about directing that growth and shaping that growth to be appropriate. And again, and the vision also has a very strong emphasis on implementation, because a vision is nothing if nothing is done. If it sits on the shelf, if planning and zoning takes no action, if the Board of Selectmen takes no action, um, there's a very strong uh, impetus to actually make some things happen in this plan. Contents of the plan, um, it's sort of broken up into four sections. Introductory sections sort of lay the context, establish the, the, the vision as we just read in part, um, and establish history and trends, sort of what has happened, not only over the last eight years since the last plan has been written, but over the last 15 years, 25 years, some, some long-term trends that we've seen that shape where Clinton is today and where we might be headed. The next sections are planning focus areas, and these were established by primarily by the planning committee um, as when we get at that question of, well, Clinton can't stand still, we can't you know, drop a dome over Clinton and not change at all. Change is going to happen. Where, excuse me, where do we want to see that happen and how do we want to see that happen? The majority of the growth that, that um, the Planning and Zoning Commission envisions over the next 10 years it should be directed to those seven planning focus areas, and we'll talk a little bit more about them later. Um, and then we get into some of the thematic sections uh, that address economic development, housing, cultural resources, uh, conservation, infrastructure and natural and municipal resources. All of these things are what we do with the, with the sort of rest of town, um, with the, the areas that we're not necessarily singling out for specific types of development. There's a lot of uh, the rest of Clinton that's, that's critical to, to mention and establish a goal for. And then we get into the implementation uh, of the plan itself, the specific action items for the plan, um, for the Planning and Zoning Commission, and also for the town uh, to move the plan from here to there. Talked a little bit about the planning focus areas. Um, and these are, and you can't really see them all that well on this, but the, the shaded areas on the, on the plan are the delineated planning focus areas. Um, they're the interchange area, and I forgot my laser pointer. Um, I'm going to come around. The interchange area, this is the old, the, the current Morgan School, this is Clinton Crossing, this is, this is I, uh, Nainbot. Uh, the Nod Road Industrial Area, over here. 
Um, the waterfront area down along the shore, obviously, um, and extending over to the, towards the town beach. Um, the west end planning area, which is the large portion bordered by the Hammonds River. Um, the east end here in sort of light green, bordering Westbrook, uh, and on either side of the one. Uh, Clinton Center, which is sort of the traditional downtown and includes the Unilever property. And the distribution center area, which is um, just north of the railroad tracks along 145. Ah. On the south side of So those are the planning focus areas. Again, that is not to say that all development in town needs to happen in those areas, um, or that the development in those areas should be a free-for-all and um, unlimited in, in scale and scope. Uh, but that these are areas that were identified by the Planning Committee and by the Planning and Zoning Commission as having the highest potential for growth. These are areas that are, were either already established or zoned as commercial or industrial areas. Um, they're areas close to infrastructure and close to communities that can take advantage of um, commercial and employment opportunities. And um, they are areas where we can uh, build upon existing built environment and existing infrastructure. Um, again, the, the goals of these were to concentrate development, not to have exclusive development. Um, and in each of these areas, design and impact on neighboring, um, particularly residential areas or neighboring natural resource areas, um, is extremely important. I think there's an extreme sensitivity to the scale of design and the scale of development and what it looks like and what its impact on the environment is. So again, it's not a uh, development free-for-all in any of these areas. Um, we want to enhance the existing built environment. We already have a Route 1. We don't need to, to build a new one somewhere else in town. We already have a downtown. We don't need to create a separate downtown somewhere else. We want to enhance that areas where we've already made the investment and where we've already historically grown. And then to improve the connectivity uh, from, one of, one, from one of these areas to another, and also to and from the residential areas. To, to improve connectivity between uh, Clinton Center and the shoreline, for instance, or between the, um, the high school and downtown. These are, this is the focus of the planning focus areas. So each of the planning focus areas chapters um, sort of follows the same format, and I'll go through this very briefly. Um, take a look at the purpose. Why was this area chosen? Why was each area chosen? This is a map of the West End. Um, it takes a look at the existing conditions, what's there now, um, how has, has growth happened there? Uh, vision, what are some of the problem areas? In the West End, you have some um, mobile manufactured housing, you have some um, uh, tidal inundation and, and flooding areas, you've got a large undeveloped track, um, the old Clinton Nurseries, which is not currently in, in use, you've got the um, Stanley Bostage property, which is a brownfield and a need of redevelopment. So each of these planning focus areas sort of takes a look at the specific challenges and opportunities for to and from development. It also takes a look at public input, what has the, the, plan, uh, the, the um, Planning and Zoning Commission and the Planning Committee, what have they heard in their in interaction with the public, what were people saying at the charrette, and each of these planning focus areas were isolated at the charrette itself, and so people would go around and say, okay, I'm looking at the West End, what do I think of that, what are some of the challenges, and we wrote that down, and so this public input, their thoughts, your thoughts, were incorporated into the plan. And then look at um, sort of future planning, make uh, specific recommendations about what things should happen in each development area to kind of realize a vision. Um, in a couple of the planning focus areas, the West End, I, you know, it's, it's both a geographically small area, it's a very small area of town, but then you look at it, it's, it's fairly large and diverse, and you can't say all of the West End uh, of Route 1 is the same. Um, certainly. Clinton Nurseries is not the same as Stanley Bostage, and it's not the same as sort of the, the, the Meadows area or down by the, um, the little marina that's along the river. And so um, in several of the planning focus areas, sub areas were, were assessed and different sort of recommendations were made for those sub areas. In the case of the West End, four different sub areas were, were analyzed. So as I said, this is, you know, there are sub areas in, in each planning focus area, in each area of development in the plan of conservation and development. It's an extremely intense plan. Um, and then we also took a look at, because this is a plan of conservation and development, these are essentially um, areas where we want to concentrate new development. They're called planning focus areas. 
but um, there, in, in each focus area, there are potential areas of conflict where the Conservation Commission or the Open Space Plan might be looking at the same property and say, oh, this might be good for conservation, this might be a great open space piece, while on the other hand you might say, wow, this is great, flat, well-drained land that's right along Route 1, it's super for development. Um, and so, and I think, uh, you know, as you can see on the, on the map on the lower left, Clinton Nurseries is a prime example of this. Um, it's a big, wide open piece of land. What would be best for it? Would it be better to, to develop? Would it be better to preserve? These are areas of conflict that the, uh, the plan identifies and pretty much flags for further discussion. Um, moving away from the planning focus areas, we do have these, these issues of continuity and growth. Economic development section took a look at where we are in Clinton as an economy, where we fit into the regional, even the, the, the national or global economy. Some of the trends that affect um, where we are economically and job-wise in Clinton. Manufacturing jobs, to the surprise of no one, has been on sort of a long slow decline. Um, the, the chart in the lower left um, actually sort of looks at, and you, you can't see this, but it's in the, it's in the plan in more detail. Um, the columns along the top are the planning focus areas, and the rows along the, along the, um, the vertical axis are types of development, be it commercial, office, retail, uh, industrial, hotel or hospitality, all these different uses, and it sort of grids out which of the different types of uses would be appropriate um, in different, uh, different uh, of the planning focus areas. They're not, again, as I said, all the planning focus areas are, are, are not the same, um, and they're not to be developed in, in exactly the same way. So you, the, the green would indicate, I don't know if can use some of those. It's, so higher density re residential might be appropriate in green in Clinton Center, but a higher density development would not be um, appropriate all the way to the right in the distribution or the um, non-road industrial area. I'm looking at the top row. Um, or conversely, uh, we have you know, uh, industrial or distribution, which is sort of the first, the first one you see pink on the, on the left. That would be totally inappropriate for a Clinton Center. Uh, there may be some questions, west end, east end, that's sort of where you have that mustard color, and then you look all the way over to the right on that um, industrial distribution would be quite appropriate for either not the or the distribution area. Um, so we sort of do a little bit of a nuanced uh, understanding of what sort of economic development should be pursued in each of the planning focus areas. In housing, um, we take a look at, again, current trends, existing conditions in Clinton, what is our housing makeup? Um, how are housing opportunities for our current residents, people who may be transitioning out of large houses, looking to downsize? How is our housing for young families um, or for the young workforce in our retail sector? We take a look at a lot of those concerns and delineate some of the specific, I mean, the, the lower bulleted list, some of the specific concerns that are discussed in the housing chapter. Uh, we have a number of, of aging historic properties that uh, the property owners are currently or are likely to struggle with uh, in terms of maintenance and, and upkeep of the historic character of those properties, what can be done for them. Uh, conversion of single family units, uh, again, larger single family houses that may have been part of subdivisions in the 60s and 70s and 80s are now being converted to two family or you have, large, you have um, uh, conversions and, and potential erosion of traditional subdivisions into more of a multifamily feel. And there's some concern about the community character that goes along with that. Uh, affordable housing, Clinton actually doesn't have a lot of it um, from, the, from the state definition perspective, uh, and certainly not attractive affordable housing that would appeal to your young professionals, your recent graduates of college, your kids coming back to town uh, looking for their first place to, to rent or to buy, and provision of services for them. And again, the neighborhood character. Um, is it's not about all recruiting people to come in from outside. It's about preserving what we have, enhancing uh, the, the neighborhoods that we have and making us a little bit more connected in those uh, neighborhoods. Municipal and natural resources. Um, the conservation chapter includes multitudes. Um, conservation chapter addresses things like greenway development and where we currently have open space. How can we find connections? There's a, a couple of potential greenway maps and trails across Clinton. Uh, and kind of connections to uh, regional open space or trail systems, either the Shoreline Greenway or the the Kakaponsa Greenway. Um, so we take a look at uh, climate change, 
how uh, coastal inundation is increasing, how uh, the spread of those, those two aerial photos you see along the top, that's the, the, the inundation of coastal marsh areas and expansion, expansion of coastal marsh areas with uh, increased storm frequency, severity of storms, and um, sea level rise. And we also take a look at hazard mitigation as a, as a concern for the town. As climate change, as particularly areas south of Route 1, become more and more at risk, um, what does that mean in terms of locating our community facilities and, and our areas of growth? Infrastructure, municipal resources, and cultural resources, again, these are looking at what we've got uh, in Clinton. Where should these things be focused? How should these things be enhanced uh, and supported? Um, infrastructure and municipal resources means not only our roads, our bridges, our water lines, our I would say our sewer, but our, we don't really have sewer, so our, our, our community wastewater facilities, emergency management facilities, but then also looks at non bricks and mortar thing, our community services. What does the town um, provide and what are the community facilities provide? And how are these, do these things um, need to be enhanced and, and uh, supported? And then cultural resources. Um, our, you know, Clinton is an extremely historic town, so how do we support those resources? Those villages, we currently have one historic um, district in town, as well as a village uh, village zoning district along Route 1. Should those be expanded? Geographically, should we have more historic districts in town? Um, how do we support the community organizations that really that really um, keep our community going? How do we promote Clinton as a destination for tourism and hospitality? And then again, how can we enhance our community for ourselves through pedestrian connections, and enhance our community connectivity and character um, through things like uh, addressing light and um, helping people protect their historic resources. All right, extremely small print. Um, in each of the chapters, in each of the, the, the planning focus areas, and then each of those thematic chapters, such as municipal um, resources, <coughs> economic development, housing, all of these chapters have <coughs> recommended action, uh, recommended items for action. All of those steps in each of the chapters are aggregated at the end of this, at the end of the plan, into what we call the implementation matrix. Uh, the implementation matrix is something like, and you can tell me, 180 items long. Yes. Um, it's so there's there's roughly 180 <coughs> action items. So for the next 10 years, these essentially are the marching orders. And it's not just for plan the Planning and Zoning Commission. The Planning and Zoning Commission is given a fair number of these items for action, which could be adjusting the zoning in um, Clinton Center to be more supportive of mixed use, residential uses above um, storefronts and retail, uh, increasing residential densities in some of these areas, perhaps in the West End or the East End, um, where, where you've got um, properties and soils that can support higher density of, of um, development in areas where you're close to the downtown and you have sidewalks, you're on bus routes. Um, so there may be some zoning changes that go along with that. But not all of these 180 implementation items are the responsibility of the Planning and Zoning Commission. There's a large number of them that would belong to the Conservation Commission, to the Economic Development Commission, to, for instance, do a market analysis or a gap analysis of what types of sectors are we missing here in Clinton um, that could be served um, by recruitment of, of certain types of businesses or putting into effect tax uh, incentives for certain types of business. Um, so that would be something that would be charged to the Economic Development Commission to, um, to lead the charge on. Some of the items would be charged to the um, Public Safety Commission, the Board of Selectmen. There, it's, there's, there's a diversity of tasks and it's, it's a job that everyone in town is going to have to participate with if we're going to be successful. Um, as Anselmo said, it's, there's a lot in here. It's an ambitious plan. Um, there's probably not the, the expectation that we're going to get all 180 items completed, but you need a target to shoot for. Otherwise, you're, you're just kind of fumbling around in the dark. So we have, there are high, there's high expectations here. Um, the, the, the way the matrix is set up is, again, on the left, you have the specific action item um, and the chapter that it's listed in. It's, each one is given a lead entity, so you could sort this matrix by, okay, what are the tasks that are assigned to the Economic Development Commission? Okay, here are these 15. Um, there are other, no, again, because no task is an island unto itself. If something is given to economic development, say this tax incentive program, 
the Board of Finance needs to be involved, the Board of Selectmen needs to be involved, perhaps the Chamber of Commerce needs to be involved. So there are supporting organizations for each action item. And then there are priorities. Um, is this a top priority? Is this something that needs to be done now or over the next year? Um, and some things can be kicked down the road a little bit. And so the Planning and Zoning Commission um, is establishing priorities for each of those action items. And then finally, the last four columns, the color you see on the right, are the um, restatement of those four we envision statements that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, each of those, um, each of the action items is sort of vetted against which of the four we envision statements does this action, is this action most supported by. So that's the, the, the structure of the implementation guide. And again, it's, it's really basically a long, long to-do list for the town for the Planning and Zoning Commission to sort of ride herd on and say, come on guys, this is the vision, here's our to-do list, let's get going. That's the overview. Again, I'm not going to read the plan to you. Hopefully, people have gotten a chance to review. Um, at, this, at this point, we're really here to hear your input and your questions on where we are with the plan. Um, the next step would be, once the public input is received um, and the hearing is closed, and I should mention that uh, as part of our process, we did refer this plan, per the statutes, to uh, the Council of Governments, to the River Cog, and received comments that you can, you can receive into the record this evening. And we also um, appeared before the, plan, the Board of Selectmen two months ago now. Um, and uh, they provided input. So there has been a, a formal input process already. Um, it's hoped that, that your input will help us um, to complete that process. What we, the, 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 the next step will be um, all the input that we received from River Cog and from the Selectmen and from various entities that submitted things through email or written things that we hear tonight are going to be vetted by, plan, by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, each comment is going to be considered, okay, we received this comment, please change the word, you know, that indicate, in, the case of, in the case of the Board of Selectmen, we claim to not have a sidewalk on this street. Well, in fact, there's a sidewalk on that street. Okay, we'll make that change. Um, some public input might be, you know, we really should try to get the, the new casino in, in Clinton rather than letting it go in Windsor Locks or wherever that comment would probably say, right, we're not going to include that in the plan. Um, so all of those comments will be vetted and, and decided upon by Planning and Zoning Commission, at which time that they will then adopt a final draft of the plan. Um, and it will be reformatted. The, the plan that you saw online or in the town hall is really just a, a, uh, a working draft. Um, a lot more fanciness is going to go into it, some, some more pictures. Um, some nicer graphics, some nicer page layout. So what you see here is really sort of the, um, the working draft and, and is not going to resemble in form the final document, but hopefully it will resemble uh, very strongly in content the final document. Um, I guess that concludes my presentation. Can you? No, I was going to ask you about the time frame for a final implementation as, as we see it presently. I would say depending on the level of input, if it's you know, if, this, if everyone has a half an hour speech prepared, we might go quite long and we may have to hold into the public hearing. <coughs> my hope, if I might hope, given that I have a long drive home, um, that it doesn't, that everyone doesn't have a half an hour, that you have important but concise input. Um, and it's up to, the, up to the Planning and Zoning Commission how quickly you want to close that portion of the public hearing and then, and then get into the deliberation for the final plan that I would anticipate over the next um, over the next month, it can be final. Okay. Uh, with that said, is there any correspondence? I think John will be with us on comments that are coming up from the other party and elsewhere. Those that we want to introduce into the round. The only one that we have in writing is the Republic, and it's a public hearing on the Planning and Zoning Commission single space letter. I don't think we write it directly now. Okay. But it is in the record. It is in the record. There's just a summary at the end saying where we do need to make recommendations or changes, maybe that's worth it. And I didn't think it was very long. General comments. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not right. All right. All right, so this is a letter from the Lower Connecticut River Valley Regional Planning Committee. 
Um, and the synopsis, general comments. The following suggestions are included for the consideration of the C. One, it is noted that the draft plan cites many other town and state plans throughout the text. Although the Connecticut Coastal Management Act, CCMA for short, was cited in sections regarding coastal resources, it was not clear whether or not the plan cited the town's only municipal coastal plan, which was adopted within the past 10 years. If not, the MCP should be cited and incorporated into the draft plan. Two, the PNZ cites the need for planning with consideration for an adoption to climate change, or adaption to climate change. This might be an opportunity to include slightly more directed action items, including recommendation for the town board of selectmen to develop a list of potential areas, roads, and facilities of town where substantial planning specific to an adaption to sea level rise. The sooner such specific action items can be included, the sooner the town can move towards wider acceptance of challenging decisions that will have to be made in the coming decades. Three, in the introduction, the plan cites state requirements and deadlines for adoption of municipal POCDs. Newer guidelines have been put forth since the drafting of this section of the Clinton POCD. Four, the POCD references upcoming recommendations from the Route 1 corridor study in which Clinton participated. Since the drafting of that section of the plan, the study has been completed with recommendations that can be specifically included. Five, Action items under economic development section of the plan recommend that the town should seek funding to create an economic development coordinator position or combined director of planning and economic development. It may be prudent to limit the recommendation of, to the hiring of a director of planning and economic development so as to ensure that the overall land use administration responsibilities required in the town and size of Clinton are accommodated. Although an economic development coordinator would be an important position, it does not seem prudent to consider the establishment of that position at the expense of having a full-time planning professional in place to oversee the entire land use function of the town. As the PNC is well aware, economic development is but a piece of the larger puzzle. Thank you for submitting the draft POCD to the Department for comment. For Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Okay. At this point, uh, we will entertain comments from the audience. Those that are in favor of this plan and have favorable comments will go first. Then those that might have some negative comments or not in favor of the plan will go after. Uh, and the general comments. It's much like every other public hearing that, that we've had. Some of you are here for multiple times so you know how the process goes. I would ask you to come up, sign the sheet at the end of the table, identify yourselves, tell us where you live, and make your statement. Try not to make it a half hour long, be concise, because John wants to get out of here before 2 o'clock in the morning, and so do we, friend. So just let us know, keep it to five minutes or less, and we'll all be very appreciative. Okay, in favor. My name is John Allen, I'm 15 Hooper's Way, and I'm, I'm in favor of this. I think this is great. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, this, is, this is a very aspirational document. In this 10 years, I think it's very important we have this kind of direction that we want to go. But I, I do believe that, you know, on first contact with the enemy, all the strategy goes out the window kind of thing. And how, what kind of mechanisms do we have in this to constantly adjust it? I mean, this should be kind of a living, organic thing. And, you know, it's always the classic, what happens if something changes that we kind of look at whether it's specific or is, you know, discrete as a certain area that we want to change, or the overall plan or vision for the town. I mean, that's, that's an important thing. And then the other was just metrics. Um, I'll, I've read this thing many times, I like what it does for the EDC, I think it gives us some real direction to go on, but, you know, these are the kinds of things that, to John's point, if you put them in a drawer, and you viscerally figure we're on track and you use it only as a litmus test to figure does this resonate or not with the plan, you can get kind of sloppy with it unless we have some stop gaps or some mileposts or some metrics to say, what have we done? And I don't know what the last 10 year one was. I don't know how that was managed. I don't, I don't think it really had much of a life. I don't think it was very utile. But if there's something we could do for this that, you know, once a year, 
Look at the 150 odd things we've got here. Look at the different commissions and find out what's going and change it if we have to. I mean, it gets, it's very close to a business plan, and I, and I like that. But business plans never move out 10 years, as you know. I mean, if you get them out for a year, you're doing magic. Um, but that's the only comment said. I think it's great. I think the work was in it was wonderful. You did a great job, and it was so easy for you to do. I know it was a snap, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that was all I want to say. Okay, um, if, if I mentioned to, to John's comments, and I, and I regret that I should have mentioned this in, the, in my discussion of the plan itself, um, this adoption, should the Planning and Zoning Commission choose to adopt this plan, it does not lock the plan in for the next 10 years, as John suggested. Um, there should be a living document. It can be, in, uh, it can be updated. Uh, and changed on an interim basis at any time, um, again, following a public hearing process. Um, and as far as metrics goes, um, yeah, I think it's, it definitely behooves the commission to revisit the plan every six months, every year, um, to sort of take a look at the, at the implementation steps and say, how are we doing? Particularly of the high priority things, um, are these things being undertaken? And, and certainly tracking progress is, is critical. Um, Peggy Adler, 5 Liberty Street. I think the plan is bringing the town in the right direction. Um, I would like to see Clinton become more and more of a destination place for people. And in conjunction with that, it occurred to me, in conjunction with the development of the site of the old Morgan School, that the developer for that property might want to consider saving the two excellent gymnasiums and the equally wonderful auditorium and tie them in with the hotel that I under the understanding is going to be built there. For if they were to retain the two gymnasiums, we'd be able to fill the hotel on an ongoing basis as a go-to site for AAU basketball. For where there are games, there are players and their parents. They come from all over our state and other states. They need a hotel in which to stay when their kids come to play. As for the auditorium, it's an excellent proscenium theater and can be rented out to theater companies and for concerts, giving people the opportunity to go to them on a smaller venue than one of the other casinos. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the plan or have positive comments to make? Jeff Cashman, 66 River Road, Clinton, Connecticut. I wanted to ask the gentleman who prepared, who prepared the plan of conservation development. I'm definitely for the plan and conservation. Those two words are very highlighted, but are very important in our community. Um, Section 11 of the old one, 7, um, made it really obvious that um, it was the obligation of the elected officials in the planning and zoning to protect farmlands. Today I'm speaking for the 120 farmers in the town of Clinton who have a legal non-conforming piece of property. And we have one farm here on Green Park Road that has just been recently accepted through zoning that is legal conforming. For legal non-conforming, I'd like to recite the non-conforming definition. And when you start to look at the definition of non-conforming, it, it makes you aware of something that's right on every time you click that page tonight was our town seal. Our town seal and legal non-conforming, the plowshare, which is what we represent in farming in, in our community, and the, the fish represent the aquaculture and water. The commerce or the anchor represents the, the shipping back and forth. And the guns obviously um, standing for your rights in those, those entities. Um, Nonconforming, as it's been since 1963, the foundation of um, planning and zoning, has been the same through current to today. Word for word, it's always been the same. Um, not one or more of these regulations can be enforced for the district in which they were designed. When you really look at that, how is it possible that our planning and zoning or a zoning enforcement officer has no zoning regulations that they can enforce on farmlands until you start to understand that until January 1st, 2012, every farmer that was registered in 121 farms that were registered in the, in the town of Clinton had a legal non-conforming status. And in that status, they honored the right that was given to the farmers in 1663. Those farmers today, and those PA 490 people today, are honored and were respected with the original farm right that founded 
every bit of everything in our town. Today, I speak for the 120 farm land pieces of property to make sure in our plan of conservation development that not just three words are there, but if you, if you read the zoning regulations today, 1.4, we simply look at where it is there at the Planning and Zoning Commission's job to, I'll read it word for word, to conserve, improve the physical appearance and character of, of the town, and to promote the economic and operational viability of agricultural businesses, farm operations, farmland protection, and maintaining community character. That's a very, very large statement right there that says to the, from the people, from the town's folks, the municipality, to protect our farms so that we can give to you people good quality food, food on your tables, flowers in your shrubberies, all the things that make up an agricultural purpose, which is a huge demand today. There's another big interest coming up in the next 10 years of people that want to have things in their own homes, in their residential issues, but the agricultural businesses have been taxed to a point where we're dealing with green technology, we're dealing with high-tech issues in town, where we're sitting here trying to make our businesses flourish. Today I applaud Gary for having a tractor and a farm stand, which took over Gator Creek when he closed and he sold out to another person in town. I thought it was awesome to see that farm stand, but Gary doesn't grow those products. Farmers like us make sure that those products are out there readily available for Gary to put into his commerce. People need that commerce. People need that access. They need that goodness. Today, GMOs, all of the issues that we're dealing with as farmers are what we deal with as farms. But we can't sit here and follow every farm regulation in town because we're so busy. Farms work 24-7 a year and we have seasonal jobs that we work. So I'm asking you to put into production today the honorability of the existing non-conforming farms and allow us to be able to develop our farms to give our community good food, Connecticut grown. All of those things are so wonderful today and that's what today I stand here and put my daughter through agricultural school trying to make sure that today we look at GMOs, we look at good quality food, we look at green recycling, we look at every bit of everything that's available from waste products to all of those things today that make sure that people are eating good quality food. Today I applaud the idea of seeing our town seal there today and I applaud the idea that we still are, every time you click that, wanting to honor our farmland properties. I believe in farming 100%. Our family believes in farming. The Richards were some of the greatest farmers in our town today. Today, farming is just as important as any downtown development, anything that's involved. And today, I applaud you if you put something in there to protect all of our farms. Thank you so much. Anyone else wishes to speak in favor of this plan of conservation of the law? When you say you are you are very considerate about where you're putting everything and you're have, you're protecting the communities and I hate to interrupt you, but you have to identify yourself for the Oh, Judith Parish Powders Village. Hi, Star Lopez. In your presentation, it had a lot of good things, but it also had a lot of questionable things. And one of the things I was questioning was the planning of putting large operations in areas where there are a lot of uh, private homes, little small developments, and, and putting large industrial places like on 145 and facing Route 1 where people come through to see our beautiful town. And there's, I'm asking, what kind of things are you planning to put, like where the old uh, Unilever plant is? Uh, the, what they had as a storage unit there. What kind of things would you put there? You asking me specifically? I'm asking you the question. 
Okay, you said you had a waste management company that was going to go in on 145. Is that where you're going to put it? The purpose of tonight's proceedings is to make your statement as to whether you approve or disapprove. Oh, I approve of everything not. except where they want to put waste management. We don't know what goes in. Okay, well, I, I, I approve of everything but where they're going to put it. I'm not saying they're putting it anywhere. I don't. Waste management in a small community like this is not appropriate. Okay, so you're against waste management? Yes. Anyone else that wishes to speak in favor of this plan? Not seeing anyone else raising hands or getting them off the chair. Anyone who wishes to speak against the plan of conservation and development? One more time. We'll do it three times. Anyone that wishes to speak against the plan of conservation and development? Anyone that wishes to speak against this plan of conservation and development? Okay, that means those seated here are either for it or don't want to speak or may have general comments. So this is your opportunity to make some general comments. Not for, not against, just general. You know, you want to say John did a great job? Great. You want to say Alan did a great job? Great. You want to say Christine? Whatever it is that's on your mind that you want to get off your chest, this is your opportunity. Hi, Andrea Rue, uh, Waterside Land. I wanted to thank all of you for really taking this on as a big project and the work that you've put into it, starting, you know, like with the shreds and including the community. And I really, I think it's amazing, and I really hope that we can take it and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Very nice. Doesn't indicate his email to me. I just want to disclose this. 
because it would be otherwise be ex parte communication, that uh, he had skimmed the whole plan, read the areas pertaining to waterfront development, and it looks okay to me. That's the extent of his email, but I just didn't want to, <laughs> did not want to have received that and not disclosed it. And I'll give this to you, Claire. All right, well, thank you, sir. Take my motion on the floor. Second, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye to close the public hearing. Aye. 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 All those say nay. Abstaining? Okay, the public hearing is closed. And I will need another motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. So a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? We're adjourned. We're adjourned. We're adjourned.